This video is brought to you by Insta360 and their One X2 camera. Listen, I know I said in the last video that we were gonna start working on the mid-engine Eclipse swap, but here's the thing. A fan of mine who is a mechanical and layout engineer, he contacted me about the suspension setup that we're gonna be doing. He's gonna help me set it up properly. We're going to do this right by calculating the center of gravity, measuring all the suspension hard points, running suspension simulations, all to make sure that the car handles and performs as good as it possibly can. But the point is, is that in order to do some of those measurements, I needed some special equipment, most notably some car scales. So I purchased those car scales. They're gonna be here in about five days. And unfortunately, I can't start disassembling this thing until we take all the measurements. So instead, today, we are going to work on the drift truck. Now in case you missed it the few times I mentioned it, I crashed the drift truck, I wrecked it. If you wanna hear the full long story, go check out the first episode of Hunter and I's podcast. I'll have a link in the description down below. There's even a highlight, so you don't have to watch the entire thing. But the short story is that I forgot how low it was. I went to exit my yard, my front yard. There's a manhole cover in my front yard, and I drove the truck straight into said manhole cover, and it broke something pretty badly. In fact, to be more specific, it bent the steering rack mount and shifted the steering rack over so that the U-joint on the steering shaft hit the frame, and thus, I wasn't able to steer. That's why the truck sat outside for so long. That's why it was such a pain to get back into the shop. And that's why today we're just going to remake the steering rack mount. Now you can see exactly where this hit. Firstly, I had to cut it apart to remove it from the truck. But secondly, this used to be straight. This used to be straight. So this corner took the direct impact of that manhole cover. Got pretty wrecked. Although honestly, I'm pretty, pretty impressed that it all held together. Because this was literally the first thing I ever fabricated on any vehicle. I'm going to build a very similar mount. It'll just be a little bit stronger. It'll clamp the steering rack a little bit better because we had some uh, wobbly issues, some death wobble issues because this mount wasn't super tight to the steering rack. The first step is to cut this entire thing I welded off of of the stock subframe, the stock cross member. And you can bet that we're gonna be using the plasma table today with some thick metal. Good as new. So now that we got that cleaned off and put back into the truck, we can start making the steering rack part of the mount. That looks pretty good. I think I can make it a little bit wider though. And, again. First take welds in the new shop. Also first time using the Viper, Viper chair as a welding chair. Let's get it. That's, that's part of the mount done. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead and work on is going to be like the main body of it, which is gonna be made out of this one inch square tube. Time it is, baby. Chop saw time. Woo! Terrifying. <laughs> 
The chop saw a bit left a perfectly straight cut, but might as well give the uh, the old belt sander a try. <laughs> Now this piece that I cut, it's gotta have one bend in it. If I had the right die, I could, I could do that with the tube bender, but I don't. And I don't want to cut it, move it, and re-weld it. I kinda want to notch it and then bend it and then, then weld the seam. Finished up the uh, second mount. So I made this little clamp thing that will go around the steering rack. And then another bottom plate. Bolts together. So now, all the pieces are done. And we can start putting the pieces together. <laughs> Look at how clean that cut is. I haven't touched it. This was straight out of the saw. It's a boy! to make this but I mean <laughs> this looks a million times better and is a million times stronger than the old one so I'm I'm pretty proud of this and the fact that we did this in a day <laughs> so that's 100% done and that is the steering rack mount. But that's not the entire thing. Now we have to make something that connects this to the subframe of the drift truck. But I've been here working on this thing for 12 hours. It's been freaking awesome, but I am tired. So I'm gonna go home and we can continue this tomorrow. Looks like I uh, got some weld splatter on my lens cover. Good thing I was smart this time and actually got a cover. And there we are, the mount is held in place with a broom on a jack. <laughs> um, and some magnets. 
<clears throat> Couple awesome things about this new mount. The steering rack is mounted higher, so the tie rod angles will be better. It'll also be better on the angle for the U-joints for the steering shaft, because that was, you know, it was pretty sharp. And it still clears everything perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and tack that in, then fully weld it, brace it, paint it, and then get this thing running again. This will be the first time it's steered in a long time. It's a little stiff, but it's steering, as you can tell. Well, it worked. I went lock to lock, and it seems okay. You know, there was a chance that the steering rack itself had been bent or damaged, but I, I think it's fine. So let's go ahead and fully weld up that uh, mount, bra mount bracket thing. <laughs> It's uh, four days after that last clip was filmed. My, uh, my car waits, my car wait, it's arrived. It comes in this nice carry package and super nice setup. But that means we can get started on the Eclipse. It was Audrey and I's birthday this weekend, which is why this is a couple days later. We had an awesome party at the shop. I had set up some awesome LED lights throughout the place before. The vibes were freaking awesome. That party was awesome. And also, shout out to my sister for getting me a new Milwaukee tool for my birthday, die grinder. That's gonna be nice. Uh, with the weight's arrival, it means that we can get started on the Eclipse, but I do still want to finish the drift truck. All we gotta do at this point, is put it back together. I think I have to replace the starter, so we'll replace the starter. I already painted the new steering rack mount, subframe thing. It turned out really awesome. I'm, <laughs> this plastic table is already changing my life. But without any further ado, let's get started reassembling the truck. not gonna start, but I wanna try. I kinda knew the start of a shot, so. <sighs> Thing about one UZs is that the starter is under there. See that? You see that, right? No way. No freaking way. What's up? I don't like the look on your face. 
I have to pull the trans to remove the starter. Are you serious? There's the starter, there's the bolts, there's the trans flange. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the trans flange is like up against the head of the bolt. Since this is not a factory transmission, the 1UZ only, only came with automatics. This is an SR20 transmission with an adapter plate. The starter's blocked. The only way to get to the starter is to have the trans and the adapter plate removed. Unfortunately on the truck, the only, only way to remove the trans is to remove the motor. But this is a new year, it's a new gingium. I wanna just give up and then, you know, let the truck sit on the lift for the next two months while we build the Eclipse. But if I work hard, I can get this motor pulled, put back in by tomorrow. So, we're pulling a motor. Well, it's been exactly an hour and a half and motor's about to come out. It's actually free, but I don't trust this single 500 pound ratchet strap, so Hunter went to get more. It has been really fun though. The Sonic tools along with my new M Milwaukee electric tools makes me so much more efficient. I know where every single tool is in the Sonic toolbox. And then obviously electric power is way better than <laughs> Got the old starter out. Couple of funny things. So what? Instead of putting it together back the way it came, I'm gonna make it so the starter's serviceable. Now, the second thing that is funny, this starter here was given to me by the Hunter Rollins, like, what, four years ago? So the first time that Hunter and I met was when he came to Chicago, dropped off parts for the drift truck build. Hunter was the guy who provided the original 1UZ that was all disassembled, but it had a lot of good parts, like a starter. The starter was the only thing I've kept this entire time, because I knew oh, this starter. It's got the wiring harness. Huh? It's got the wiring harness. Part, part of it, yeah, that is true, part of it. Point is, is that after all these years, I'm using the starter that Hunter gave me. Can I include some clips of what you yeah, filmed from the video? Okay, we're gonna include some clips of the video that Hunter recorded when he, he met me the first time. All right, Jim Jim, stop. Just got all the engine stuff unloaded. Let's go on into a shop. Here we are, we're in Jim Jim's shop. I'm, I used to love Minecraft. The trunk doesn't open, so, oh, there we go. Get the vibes going. Another thing we're gonna to do to the starter before putting it back together, we're going to sharpen the end of the teeth. This is something that Collins Adapters, the company that made the adapter kit for the SR20 Trans, recommends doing. I did not do it the first time, and that is what caused a lot of these starting issues. See, since it's not a factory flywheel, it doesn't line up perfectly. So sometimes the teeth get caught, don't actually engage the flywheel, and thus the car doesn't start. So if you sharpen the teeth, make them, make them pointy, then they can slide and mesh with the flywheel much easier. Talk to my friend that uh, is a big SR20 guy. This trans is, is totally shot. You can see how much it plays. It's got like an eighth of inch of play in the input shaft and the oil that came out of it was super flaky. So, I mean, we're doing all this work and it might just blow the trans next week, but I'm gonna put it back in. I don't have a trans. I don't wanna wait for a trans. Maybe that's a bad decision, but 
whatever. Ready to pull the engine again next week? <laughs> So fucking close. We were gonna get it started tonight. I was putting it in and um, the, I got lots of excuses, but I, I fucked up the gasket, the intake manifold gasket. So now we can't put the intake manifold on, so we can't start it. Fortunately, this was an $80 gasket, so that kind of sucks. It's really fragile too. I mean, it's like, just break it out and take it apart and it crumbles. But the point is, it's not running tonight. Tomorrow. I think we're ready to give a shot. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna cry. The fact that this motor was on the ground uh, a few hours ago, that's pretty crazy. Obviously, it's not all I put back together, but I just, I just wanna know that it starts. I just wanna know. I just wanna hear this thing. Hunter's five-year-old, whatever, freaking how many miles starter worked. Grinding the slats into it worked. It's, it is back together, it works. <laughs> I'm gonna fire back up, let it warm up, bleed the power steering, the coolant, all that kind of stuff. And before we drive it, gotta put the front end back together, gotta give it alignment, and I gotta put it, the spacers back on it. Look at these nice plastic covered sockets for wheels. That way you don't scratch your beautiful finish. It. Oh man, it feels good to be back in the truck. I'll be it. <laughs> uh, I knew pulling out the motor would be worth it. I mean, this thing hasn't driven in three, four months, something a long time. I can kind of tell the, the tires are a little flat spotted, the brakes are a little rusty. It needs to be a little uh, broken back in, but the steering feels awesome. Way less floaty than I remember it being. And it really should feel much better because the tie rods are at a much better angle than they were. Oh yeah. 
It's got some smells, that's for sure. Ah, first drive smells. Now let me take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, Insta360 and their One X2 360 camera. Their One X2 is an incredibly user-friendly and powerful 360 camera. This is how I got that awesome Need for Speed style bumper shot. I just set up my suction cup mount, put their carbon fiber selfie stick onto the suction cup mount, camera onto the selfie stick, and then hit record, and then I went on a drive. The thing that is so great about this, you don't have to worry about getting the right angle, setting up your camera to you know film the right thing. You put it somewhere, it films everything, and then after you're done filming, once you're editing it on the computer, you can choose where the camera's pointing. Insta360 has an awesome mobile app that allows you to control the camera and preview what it's seeing, you know, scroll around, look at all the different angles. They have awesome desktop software for you to edit the footage easily. The camera has amazing stabilization, amazing resolution, 5.7K. It's got amazing colors, it's got amazing audio. Now I can already tell this is going to be way better to use than other branded action cameras. Another awesome thing is that this thing is waterproof up to 10 meters. So if you guys are interested in Insta360 and their One X2 camera or any of their other cameras, I'll have a link in the description down below. And yet again, a huge thank you to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm so incredibly happy to have the truck back. I'm happy to have the steering steering and the starter starting. It only required me removing a motor and <laughs> doing a bunch of fabrication, but it is back. Now, once we're done with the Eclipse, done with rebuilding the Volvo, I'm gonna completely redo the truck. Same motor setup and everything like that, but new suspension, supercharger, you know, new paint, new, you know, new, all, all the goodies, new, new brakes. It's gonna get the love it deserves. But for now, I can at least enjoy it as it is. I can go pick up things with it, use it as a truck. I know this is many of your guys' favorite vehicle of mine, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Definitely the favorite motor that I have. I love this one, you see. It's good to have her back. In the next video, we start the process of mid-engine swapping a Mitsubishi Eclipse with the help of a that's pretty exciting. And if you want to see that video early, you can you can click up there. <sighs> Support the channel on Patreon, get early access to a bunch of stuff, get exclusive access to a bunch of stuff. Thank you to everyone who does that. But otherwise, I'll see you in a few days. Peace out, guys. Goodbye. And yet again, a huge thank you to Insta360 and their One X2 camera for making this video possible.